Hi, it's Ursula from Ursula-Smith.com, and I am back with another experiment. So um, this was kind of a, it was a distress oxide um, resist, the technique where I bring distress oxide spray stain through a stencil, come back over it with regular spray stain, and then the oxidation slash resist of the distress oxide gives, um, you know, kind of a two-tone look, but this, this one was a failed one. And so what I did was I just took a um, cutout uh, by Tim Holtz. Um, this is per Perspective Butterfly. And you can see I was cutting this out of Upo and I kind of wrecked it up because whatever, it moved when I went to... Um, roll it through my Sizzix Big Shot again, but I, what, I just grabbed it just because I had it laying around, and I brought molding paste over the top, and you can see the molding paste picked up some of the spray stain, so this was mostly blue, um, which was the Distress Oxide, but then I had some of the browns, and it seemed like the molding paste picked up some of that spray stain and uh, gave kind of a cool look. So I'm going to try and recreate this just to see was this a one-off or, you know, is, is this kind of a cool thing to do with my failed uh, pieces of cardstock that I don't really like. And so I have a few pieces. So this one has more blue in it, but it it's kind of hard to see the design. Um, it's a little too contrasty to use as a background. I mean, you could do other things to it, but I'm going to try this. Like I said, it has more blue. Um, and then this one has less, and then this one has less color altogether. So I'm going to try to do all three and see what we come up with. So for the first one, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to show you the technique with the molding paste on one, so you don't have to watch me do it all three. I mean, I've done this a million times, but um, in any event, I'll show that, and then I'll go off camera, do the rest of them, let them dry, and then we can come back and see what they look like. So I will go grab my materials and be back. Okay, I am back. And so I just have a different Yupo paper cutout. This one actually is my own. And I'm using golden light molding paste. So this is opaque. And um, like I said, it will cover up some of the background, but it should reactivate the inks that are under there. So I just bring it over the top. And then I've done this in other videos where I've taken the cutout and tried to use whatever molding paste is left on top and um, flip it onto another piece of paper and see if I can get that image. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the time. Oh, actually, you know what? I have an extra piece of cardstock. Maybe I will. Kind of cover as much of the background as I can. So you're seeing some of the ink kind of come through up here. So we shall see. Uh, let's scrap this and I try to use my cross locking tweezers. To pull that up. And I'm going to move that out of the way so I don't wreck it. Bring this back. And I'm just going to pat to try to 
see if I can get some of that molding paste. A lot of times I have to spritz it with water to get it to transfer. But let's see what we can get out of this. Yeah, it didn't, doesn't look like it. Tra oh, it transferred on one side, but not the other. So I may get a wing out of it. <laughs> And again, I normally would spritz it with water, but I don't really want to take the time. So I'm going to go off camera and do, no, well, that's not the piece I wanted. Oh, I think I just used up the piece I wanted. Well, I'm sure I have another one kicking around that has less spray stains. So um, I will go off camera and do the other pieces. And when they're all cured, I will be back. So just so we can compare, I decided to take a piece of, this was just plain cardstock that I ran um, molding paste over the Yupo paper cutout. And we're just gonna spray it with the Distress Oxide and spray stains, so just so that we can compare the looks. Um, so, I'm going to try and use the same colors that I used in the other one. So this is Salvage Patina Distress Oxide Spray. And then I usually use that with Vintage Photo and Ground Espresso or the Walnut Stain Distress Spray Stains. So I'm going to try and stay as close to... The design as I can so it's a little bit trickier and then come back over so that was the distress oxide and then come back over with the regular distress spray stain and if you wanted more precise control instead of using the sprays obviously you could use the um, an ink pad. Come on. And we'll go off and let that dry. And when everything's dried and cured, I will be back. Okay, so I am back with the samples that I showed you uh, what I did on screen. And um, they did the same thing as the original one, so it wasn't a one-off. So this was a combination of um, Distress Oxide ink with Distress Spray Stain over the top of it. Um, Distress Oxides in, you know, colors like Broken China and Salvage Patina, that sort of colors. And then over the top, I probably use some combination of vintage photo, gathered twigs, um, uh, walnut stain, and espresso. So I think in this, in these cases, it was vintage photo and, and the espresso. I forget the other word in there, but um, I liked the way the, that these color combinations came out. So um, for whatever reason, the molding paste seems to pick up the stain, but not so much of the dioxide. So um, I did like the look of that, where you can kind of see the hints of the blue in the background. So I like that. Um, this one just had a little bit more of that in it. And then this one, um, it had a lot of just kind of spatter spray to it where so it kind of fades out if I wanted to fill that in you know I could try going in with a paintbrush but I think what I would probably do now is use like a matching uh Yupo paper cut out this one's already been colored but I, you know I could do something like that if I didn't like the look of it but um I could take one so I keep some of my Yupo paper cutouts um, clean, meaning that when I've used them with the molding paste, I clean them right away uh, so that they don't hold on to ink and paint like this one did. This one will be used as a, you know, something for the, the on top of a card. But 
Um, what I could do is spray the back of this. And I did this in another video that you could go check out on my YouTube channel. So I spray it with either spray stain or distress oxide ink and then kind of line it up in the air and bring it down, you know, on top. And then that would fill in the ink would go into the cardstock and kind of fill in that speckly, um, the speckly bits. So, and then this was just another idea where I used a different UPO paper um, cut out. So I did a combination of a few in, in one and I like the way that one came out. Um, this one I just wanted to show you, that is the difference. So this was, um, as I mentioned, you know, something along the lines of this Yupo paper cutout molding paste over the top and it ends up looking like this. This was a plain piece of white cardstock with a different Yupo paper cutout. In this case, it was the Perspective Butterfly um, molding paste over the top. So the whole thing was white to start with. And then I went back in after everything dried and sprayed with similar colors. So you end up with the dioxide in the background as well as the um, shape. So it's just a different look, um, but this one is a little bit quicker in my mind. So then I wanted to show you, this was a piece of my mop-up, you know, so anytime I had extra ink, I just threw this down. And so I wanted to show you, I decided to try the same technique on something like that. And a uh, very different look from just the two colors. So the background is super busy. So this does not show up as well. Again, if I wanted, I could use the Yupo paper stamp idea, spray it, bring some more ink on top if I wanted to do that. So then I tried it again with another section of it and I sprayed just a blotch of Distress Oxide ink kind of in the corner where I knew I was going to put that um, cut out. And so that shows up a little bit better. Still a busy background, but not bad. And then I did want to show you, so this one, just a different cut out, same technique, and that's the way that it ends up looking. Now this you see kind of less of the design, um, but I liked, I liked the colors going on here. So again, combination of vintage photo and ground espresso. That's the, I think it's ground espresso. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Um, and sometimes, especially on top of the molding paste, it can appear to go almost like a rust color. So what I did was I didn't clean this after I, had used it to do the molding paste in the background. I left the molding paste on it and then sprayed with those two spray stains. And it did kind of go like a rusty color. So now, and it came out darker. So now layered one on top of the other, that's a really cool look. So um, anyway, I really like that experiment. I hope you did too. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.